Hello everyone and welcome to another Fire Carry Guide. Today is part three of our American, no, sorry, Japanese uh, carrier guide uh, following the same uh, kind of concept of the American one which we did uh, last week. We were going to be following uh, the tier four to the tier 10 uh, Japanese carriers. Today we're focusing on the reusual. So without further ado, let's get into our game. If you haven't already seen the uh, Hosho and Zuiho games, they're already up on the playlist. Go check them out if you're interested. But today we're now talking about tier six and the Ryuzhou. And this is great because now we can use alt attacks. So congratulations if you've made it this far. You'll find that the Japanese cars have become far more flexible in what we can do and how we can play and how we can carry the game. Now, before we get into all the kind of uh, nitty details, we're going to follow the same concept. We're going to talk about modules, upgrades, captain skills, and then we're going to a random battle and we'll showcase how I would use the Ryuzhou, uh, you know, in a random battle. And we'll talk perhaps how we might play it in a competitive or ranked. That being said, let's go straight in. Under modules, we see that we have quite a few options here for the Ryuzhou. The Ryuzhou by default comes as 112. Okay. Now, we can change two choices here we can go three one one now that means three fighters and the problem here is you lose your torpedo bomber which means you lose your ability to cross drop three one one was the go-to build for ranked and competitive because the three fighters completely out dominate the single fighter however in most random battles you will want to go with the natural upgrade to one two two to have two sources of torpedo bombers to have two sources of dive bombers so our sources of fire and flooding and this is the standard kind of strike capability that you'll have in tier 7 and tier 8 two torpedoes and two dive bombers we only have high explosive and we only have normal torpedoes we're not deep water there are no upgrades for the torpedo bombers we do have upgrades to the fighters from a 5 to a 6 and the dive bombers get an upgrade from a 5 to a 6 first option i would probably go with is an upgrade to your fighter planes and then we would uh, upgrade the uh ship module so one two two so fire planes ship module and then probably um the dive bombers after that and then the hull yeah it's along those lines in terms of upgrades we always uh, like before you even start using ship the basic two skills should be the fire plane ones before you can take the, the thing at the harbor you want to increase the damage of your guns specifically the fighter planes uh we also want to get um, the uh, damage control system modification one that's just reduced the fire and flooding if we are under attack we definitely need to fire health because we only have a single fire plane so just like the Zuiho and the uh, Hosho we need to be careful how we use our planes but more plane health means we have better chances in fire duels better chances in strafes and better chance in enemy AA the fighter ammunition however is really important because the Japanese fighter planes don't have as much ammunition as the American ones do and more ammunition means more strafes and more egg strafes so this is this is really really powerful this is the one way we can sort of try and um balance the fact that the american counterpart in this scenario the independence still has one fighter to your one fighter but his is more powerful and he will kill you just like he did in the zuiho and the whole show except now strafing becomes an element and then for our last and fourth upgrade we're going to take damage control system modification two and this just reduces the time that we are on fire and flooding um and that reduces the damage uh, there's no point taking propulsion acceleration or steering gears in terms of ammunition consumables you can choose if you want to take damage control party two and if you watched the zuiho game you would have thought that might have saved me but no matter it's up to you if you want to choose this carrier sniping is a thing in the uh four five six seven brackets so if you want even with the activation time of 30 seconds you want to take that you go right ahead in terms of exteriors well, pick yourself a camouflage that gives experience. It's entirely up to you. Whatever you have, I'm just going with 100% one. But sometimes, if this is, uh, a, a, you know, the ship's fully upgraded and you already have the the hear you, the next ship in the line upgraded, then maybe you want to go for captain experience ones. That's up to you. In terms of signals, um, it's kind of the same setup as we've had in previous ships. I'm going to take the AA signal because sniping at tier six is definitely a possibility and. Uh, you can get into games with double carriers, either a double with a 5-6 or two sixes or a 6 and a 7. So in that particular element, I will take the AA signal because the usual can have good AA, as we'll show you in the captain skills in a moment. I will take uh, speed on the ship as well. It's relatively nippy at 29.4 kilometers, uh, or knots, sorry, uh, in terms of speed. So uh, that's a personal choice for me. I'd like to take the flooding chance as well because I like uh, to, I've got two torpedo bombers, I want to increase the chance of flooding. 
you can take the flooding and the fire and that would be your standard com combat setup for your four signals but in this particular instance i'm just choosing uh, commander experience you can drop the speed uh, if you want to and you can go with special signals or some economic signals captain or ship or that type of stuff but i do recommend keeping the aa signal at least and at least the flooding signal just so that you can have self-defense and offense uh, in terms of flags i will grab number two right captain skills my captain for the usual same with the hero shikaku is competitive slash ranked and as a such oh, one sec here it's very patriotic music but it's a little bit distracting so we're just going to turn that down for a moment there we go so captain skills I do have a 19 point captain the usual. This is a dedicated captain for the usual, as we'll show. And this is actually not fully ranked competitive. That's kind of interesting. So, how do I play this thing? Well, we take the one point aircraft servicing expert. This um, allows uh, plane health, loading time. We've been through this many times if you've watched any previous video. Planes are tank here, they can get inside AA, last longer, fighter duels. The 5% HP carrier base health is actually more for the fighters than it is the bombers, because you want to have as tough as you can your fighter planes to get kind of air control. So if you can dominate air control, not that this particular ship will against an independence, for example, but if you can get air control or if you can survive longer, it's extremely important and it benefits the rest of the game. We can now cross drop, which means the two point skill will be torpedo acceleration. I like this to going after destroyers, you know, crossing from behind and from the side. And I also like this for going after any target that's quite maneuverable to maximize the number of connections and mitigate the chance of them escaping. I feel that without torpedo acceleration, it not as good in Japanese. If you only have a single torpedo bomber wave, such as the American ones, then you can choose not to take torpedo acceleration, but in this sense, I like it. For the three-point skill, if you are playing just random battles and you want to turn around your bomb plane as fast as possible, then torpedo armor expertise is the way to go. However, if you're concerned about sniping attempts on you, especially if you don't have a full 19-point build captain, or if you're going to play ranked or competitive, you wouldn't take torpedo armor and expertise. You would take basic fire training to push up the um, mid-range, but also the long-range guns. The long-range guns here are actually quite potent. They're quite good for tier six. If you take basic fire training, bumped up by another 20 percent it's actually quite strong and it synergizes really well with the manual fire control for AR arm because that then doubles the damage of the damage that you've already boosted with the basic fire training but i digress first skill to take it the four marker is the air supremacy you want to bump that fighter from four planes up to five because you've only got that single fire it's essentially the wave plane wave has more health has more dps everything's benefits from that and then increasing the dive bomber you're going to increase two of the dive bombers and it just means there's more chance of you hitting something or if you're dropping the payload and you're flying and scouting there's they last longer so air supremacy is always the go-to in the four pointer first after that we take dog fighting expert dog fighting is really important because we might be matched against tier seven carriers and we need that dog fighting expert to deal with those carriers or at least to give our fighter a chance Plus the extra ammunition is also extremely helpful because it allows us to have a little bit longer of strafe, more strafes, more exits, that type of stuff. So it's very, very helpful. After the 11 point skills, that will leave us with eight. There's no point to take concealment expert because we're already at 9.6 with camouflage. That will push us down far too low. We, If we get hunted by a destroyer and then we are ship detected and we have a de detectability range of around seven kilometers, we have very little time to react so if we keep it at 9.6 we can react to enemy ships spotting us ship spotting and then we can deal with them uh, so as a result we can pick other skills and in this particular instance i'm a real fan of the advanced fire training pushes out the mid-range but more importantly it pushes the long-range guns up to six kilometers and i'm a big fan of the manual fire control for air armament particularly in the japanese cars because this then doubles the damage when we click on a plane anybody's trying to snipe you you click on the most important priority plane if it's just a fighter duel click on the fighter six kilometer range it's not actually that far it's, it's pretty good at six kilometers not everyone realizes the distance between their uh, plane and your hull and they're not necessarily aware that you know i'm losing planes here and then if torpedo bombers come after you you try and position it, your ship so that the torpedo bombers follow you for the maximum amount of time and then you click on them with your aa and you might find that you kill off the entire wave or you kill off a couple enough planes to mitigate the damage that you're going to take so having self-defense is very important especially in usual when you only have a single fighter and it isn't necessarily guaranteed to save you all the time so choices are randoms you can take torpedo armor expertise competitive ranked you can take basic fire training or if you feel that the sniping meta or you don't have a full 19 point captain you may choose to take the basic fire training rather than torpedo armor expertise captain
that's entirely up to you. If your usual captain is also, for example, say a Kage captain, I would recommend taking Torpedo Armin Expertise because the Kage gets you know, lots of Torpedo Bombers, so you want to kind of uh, turn them around a lot. But that's up to you. So you've got two choices here on how you want to go about it. Right. That's enough waffling about the usual. Let's go straight into a runabout. So we could be against fives and sixes. We could against just an enemy six, one carrier. We could hypothetically in a game with sevens. We could be coming across Saipans. It's possible um, in a double carrier game. So we'll see what the game gives us and then we'll work around it basically. Double carrier game, all right, but it's fives and sixes. Now the Borg has tier five fighters and he has, uh, if he has dog fighting, that means he'll actually do quite well against our single fighter. So the Borg fighter is going to be our usual fighter because our usual fighter is just as powerful as the Zuiho fighter because the Zui had the tier six as well. So the the Zuiho and the, and, and the Ryujo have the same fire strength. So the Borg will beat us. The Independence will also beat us because he now has a tier six fire. So even though he doesn't have the dog fighting expert bonus, he will still beat us because his planes are tankier and bigger. Um, so we need to work kind of well with our bulk. But the thing that we have that the tier 5s don't is strafes. We do not click on the enemy fighters. We want to strafe them. So if an enemy bulk's going to try and grab us, we want to run away, we try and strafe from the side, we want to do whatever we can to damage him and then just leave. And that goes the same with his bombers. We don't want to click on enemy bombers. We want to strafe enemy bombers if we're going to be doing some sort of uh, kind of defensive protection role. Right. I think uh, even though my torpedo bombers are first, I'm going to do fighter, then torpedo bombers, then dive bombers. We have two destroyers there, one. That actually benefits us quite a lot. So if we can maybe try and snipe off their DD or at least spot him, we're going to get some benefits here. Our dive bombers might not be used in offensive capability. We may actually drop the payload and use it in a scouting role. We can't kill any battleship here. We just need time to do it. We can attack with one torpedo bomber and one dive bomber, a fire and a flooding source. That's why we take the flooding signals to increase the chance we get flooding from one torpedo bomber wave. And if we get that fire flooding, it means that the enemy ship that we have bombed will have to damage control party. And if you damage control parties, we can then use the second torpedo bomber and the second dive bomber to come in after the damage control party uh, kind of immunity time, that like five seconds to 20 seconds, depending on the, on the ship class and type is over. And then we get another sticky, you know, as in that lasts, fire and flooding, and that will bleed out the ship and he'll just die. But this assumes, of course, you can you can survive enemy AA with your single torpedo bomb wave as it moves in, and you can also survive uh, harassment from enemy fighters. Now, this is probably the Bogues fighter, but the Independence may not have upgraded. Let's check. No, that's the tier six. So this is definitely the Bogue fighter. We don't want to click on him because we'll lose that duel. Right, so there's, there's no point here. Um, what could we go after? Well, he's sending his fighter up in the north, and the bulk will lose probably to the independence. I'm not entirely. Well, if he strafes, then he might actually win that. I don't know what, what our destroyers are doing. Well, Fushion's going to go for A, but. I'm luring this fighter down so that I can go for the Congo. See, his fighter's in the north and his fighter's down here. So by luring him away from the Congo, I can get a hit in. And what we're going to do is I'm watching his fighter on the minimap. I'm going to attack him with only well, the same way we said we would. See how he's turning in now hard? So we'll dive bomb him with the manual. Oh. There's his fire plane, so we're going to drop as quick as we can. So we got one fire. We'll have these guys go back. Move him out of the way. See how he's clicked on this plane. I might be able to punish him here. And I'm going to move the torpedo bomb up so that... Oh, he turns away. Nope, got him, got him. Absolutely brutal. Now, while this is going on, you see the Japanese guy. We didn't get a flooding, but he's, the fire is out. That means he might have damage control party that. I'm assuming he has. This fire can't exit strafe. I'm gonna call him back now to recharge. And we're gonna see if we really want a flooding on this guy. So that's one fire, it's still not enough, but if you get a flooding, this will really hurt him. And we'll call our fire back to get it back to full strength. Nope, RNG said nope. So we only got sticky fire, Congo lives. 
what else has happened? Well, the enemy Borg is now only down to three fighter planes. We can land and we can get our uh, fill our wave back up to five again, and then we'll have three left over because we've got five at the moment. Uh, torpedo bomber wise. We're pretty good in terms of reserves, so we don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, but we do have no map presence. We could have kept one of the dive bombers out and spotted maybe the Fushun, for example. Uh, that might have been a good idea. Uh, his fighter's down to just two. That's pretty good as well because ultimately he won't have a full wave anymore. So like this is all the enemy fighters the Borg now has, but he does have his bombers. What I want to do is get the fighter out because now I can kill off these three planes and then I can prevent any further bombing. But I just need to get out. So this is like the last time the Borg is going to have the opportunity to get an attack in. So we'll get the fire at first, and then we'll load all the remaining bombers out. And I'm probably going to follow my team just to get a bit closer. Uh, Molotov turned to avoid the torpedo bombers and he got slammed by the battleships. Right. We'll get all our bombers out. Targets we can go after. Maybe the Congo again. And the north might want to try and help these guys. We could go for the Fushon, for example. Maybe the New York, maybe the Omaha. We could maybe bully that one fighter. Because <clears throat> these guys aren't over yet. They're actually kind of holding their own, so maybe we want to help them. First things first, I just want to get our planes out. And then we'll decide. But if he goes for me, rather than going on a click on duel, head on strafe, will kill probably one plane. And that's enough, because then he's down to two, and then it's just going to be... I'll pr I probably won't lose a plane in any future engagement. And I actually do think I'm going to help. Look, I could kill off the New York, and I could also maybe kill off the Fushun. Okay, so our friendly fighter's down here doing some sort of cover, so we might bring our fighter up to help take care of this New York, who's already pretty low. In fact, we might even be able to dive bomb the New York if he survives and then torpedo bomb the Fushun. <clears throat> so we know his fighter's there. He's in the wrong place at the moment. Enemy battleship is down. Cool. He can still strafe this guy, so we need to be a little bit careful of him. If he's not paying attention, I might actually try and... Oh, I think I got him. Oh, no, I didn't. Right. No, I did. Okay, now we're going to focus on the destroyer. And it's been a while since I've done this, so... See how he's turning? See if he turns back. It's quite quick, but I'm turning into him. He might dodge it, because he's fairly nifty. Oh, I think I've got him now. Don't think. Well, maybe. No. Got him. Cool. Okay. Let's focus back on here. Let's see if we can't deal with the south fighter plane. We've got two dive bombers. What can we go after? Well, the Bayern, we could try and get some fires on them. We could, like, kind of tick them. I think we've got this game in the bag, though, because uh, we've got the caps and they don't. So rather than. Um, sending both dive bombers, I'll send the weaker of the two dive bombers uh, to trigger some fires. We'll keep the second one back. We'll protect them so the fires can't interfere with our fires away from his AA, uh, the Molotov AA. Okay, the line in, see he comes in more enemy fires, but that doesn't matter because we'll get the drop in. Okay, so I think got fire, that's cool. Is he paying attention? Actually, you know what, I might... I think he's just going to click on him. So I'm luring this fire in a predictable path. And he pulled away. Yeah, it's fair enough. I saved the plane. Uh, I saved the plane, though. Try and save this first, because I'm kind of out of position. The Byron's fire is out. Maybe we can try and get a bomb in on him. Mm, 
not sure I want to kill off this plane wave. Well, the bombs have already been dropped, so there's nothing really I can do anymore. But if I lose, I've lost the AA help. No, here comes a friendly fire. Okay. So, provided I don't lose two more planes. Oh, he's going after the torpedo bomber. Thing is, I'm thinking, can I get a full wave again? And I've got three reserve, and I've got them down two planes. So I can afford to lose one more plane. Uh-oh. Let's see if I can't get him back. Probably not. But if he's going after that, he's not protecting his own uh, planes. I guarantee that the Congo dies. So there's no way he can turn in any direction. He can't turn in, he can't turn out, he will die. And the second wave is more of insurance, just to guarantee he will die. I mean, you could gamble the first wave, but you don't want them to have to fly around with the other one and then come back. And that's that's pretty much the game wrapped up. They're down, they, they have no points. We're not going to hit a thousand. It's going to be the next kill that finishes it. <clears throat> so our single fire is limited in what it can do. We can't, we can't be everywhere. We can't protect everyone. But with the strafe, we can not just panic a plane like we would in the tier 4 5 we can um kill off plane waves or mitigate damage by killing off planes with the strafe mechanic by using our if he's going after if the fighter enemy fighters behaving in a predictable manner like going in a straight line or chasing a bomber we can manipulate our bomber to force him in a straight line and so that our fire can strafe from behind so that's really beneficial in our uh behavior and then really careful fire control at the very beginning so that we can get that air control at the beginning, like like killing off the Bogue's fighter wave for not losing any of ours at the beginning means he only has three lane planes left. If it's a straight on click on engagement, he will win that, so we would have to extra because we, can, we can't afford to lose all our planes, we don't have enough reserves for that. Um, the Independents must have lost a few of his planes, but we, we were able to punish uh, some of his with a strafe and kill him off, and just by getting a little bit of air control, it means that we are free to bomb how we choose to, but in terms of a defensive line, we still only have one fire, we still are limited in our map presence and where we can be, so although I wasn't doing it this game, look at your team composition, look at where they are on the map, who is the most vulnerable, is there a particular guy who's doing an important role, is it a destroyer, a lone battleship, is he doing a good role, would it really hurt if he dies, if so, maybe if your bombers don't need protection, you should fly your fighter over here, because if I was the enemy carrier, then that would be your prime target, and you want to kind of protect this guy or scout from, so you got to do what you can with your one fighter, it is limiting, but it's a... Uh, you know, you do what you can to help the team. The usual is not as strong as the here of the Shikaku because of the extra flexibility of a single fire wave and having more map presence, but it's still very, very strong. Your your bombing capability is very, very high. Your ability to damage over time is very high. You have slightly more plane reserves than the uh, Zuiho, so rather than having uh, like a plane and a half of fighters, you have two wave of fighters at you know five planes apiece. Uh, so there's quite a good strength to the Ryujo. The Ryujo is also the first. Uh, carrier that you can use alt attacks and you can really maximize it in the tier 6 bracket to really pull games back that seem that they were going to be lost. Good strafe mechanics, good cross dropping torpedo bombers, good accurate dive bombers or dropping the two dive bombers you've got to form a scouting role if there's a really heavy enemy fighter presence which we didn't do this game but you can do and that can try and stretch the enemy fire planes so they fly away. So lots of options you can do with the Ryujo. Very powerful ship. It's very enjoyable. Highly recommend you playing it and um, anyway that ends it for today's video. Tomorrow we will, or next time I should say, we will be covering the Hear You. If you haven't watched the previous videos, go check them out in the playlist. And uh, with that being said, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.